So today's webinar, as uh, mentioned earlier through uh, all the emails, is how to file a claim for plantar fasciitis and other foot conditions. So I'll be talking primarily about plantar fasciitis, but um, the topics that I cover would be applicable as well for other foot conditions, uh, primarily like uh, pes plantis flat feet. All right. So what's plantar fasciitis? You probably hear a lot of uh, veterans talk about this. Uh, it's basically an inflammation of the thick band of tissue uh, called the fascia at the bottom of your foot. So it runs from your heel to your toe. So if you look at this diagram, that, that thick band that's right there at the uh, bottom of your foot, that's, that's that fascia. And when plantar fasciitis is going on, you're, you're getting that inflamed um, and you're experiencing pain and discomfort right there at the bottom of your, your foot. Uh, it's often described as, as it states here, a stabbing sensation. So if, if you've got plantar fasciitis, you may go, yep, my, my feet hurt. I'm getting that stabbing pain at the, the bottom of my foot. That's what a lot of people uh, typically uh, describe the symptoms. Uh, the plantar fasciitis can be acting up a lot early in the morning when you, you're first starting to walk, uh, maybe some of the pain alleviates throughout the day, but then by the time you're at the end of the day, it could start to be hurting again. Uh, some of the causes of plantar fasciitis be uh, obesity. Uh, you could also have flat feet. So because of your flat feet, uh, that could actually be causing you to have uh, the plantar fasciitis. Uh, you could have tight Achilles tendons. Uh, your job that required you to be on your feet could be causing you to have the plantar fasciitis. Uh, in regards to diagnosis, you know, you would probably get the diagnosis initially, um, be describing these symptoms to your primary care provider. Uh, more than likely, the primary care provider may send you to a specialist uh, for your feet, like a podiatrist. Uh, and so forth, um, that doctor will examine your feet. Uh, they may or may not do some imaging, like x-rays or MRI to kind of confirm the diagnosis uh, and so forth. All right, so that's plantar fasciitis. Okay, so here's the next uh, condition that a lot of veterans deal with. And this one's pes planus, flat feet. So uh, what's pes planus? So this is when you've got little or no arches or your arches have fallen. And you can see by the picture that this gentleman's feet, uh, there's actually no arches down there. And you can see the difference between a normal foot that has that curve at the bottom, you know, that arch, and then a flat foot that it's actually pressed right against um, the, the bottom or the floor. Uh, so some of the symptoms that people use to describe their flat feet, uh, you know, painful arches, their feet feel tired, they've got inside pain uh, in their feet, their feet could be swollen, uh, they can be complaining about back pain, leg pain, and, and, and when standing on their toes, they can describe that as being difficult because of the uh, pes planus. Some of the causes, uh, very similar causes uh, to the plantar fasciitis, obesity is a factor, uh, aging, those uh, people who suffer from diabetes may be experiencing flat feet. Uh, women tend to get flat feet during their pregnancy. The diagnosis, again, very similar in the process of being diagnosed with a condition. You'll probably initially share your symptoms with your primary care provider. He or she will probably refer you to your foot doctor or podiatrist. That podiatrist will examine your feet. They're going to look at the sole, maybe even look at the soles of your shoes, see if there's any um, kind of unusual wear patterns in the, in the bottom of your shoes. Uh, they observe you in your feet and your legs while, while raising up on your toes. Maybe even the, the doctor may have you walk forward and backwards in front of them so they can actually see your gait and your posture. Uh, again, they could also um, order imaging such as x-rays and or MRIs uh, for, for the diagnosis. Okay, so how is plantar fasciitis, fasciitis rated? 
So there's actually no category for plantar fasciitis. It actually gets rated under the diagnostic code 5276 for flat feet, uh, right over here. So you could put this. And if you click on that link, it'll take you to the electronic version here of the uh, uh, code, code of Federal Regulations. All right. So flat feet can be rated, or plantar fasciitis, can be rated between zero and 50%. Uh, it goes zero, 10, 20, when you're having conditions just in one foot. Uh, if you have <clears throat> conditions that are bilateral, being in both feet, then that could take you to 30 and 50% levels. Um, so with mild, uh, being rated at zero, symptoms can just be uh, arch support uh, and things like that. Uh, you know, maybe some mild pain, uh, mild uh, uh, inflammation, and so forth. That'll get you at a zero. Uh, when you start going up to the moderate levels of the symptoms, that will get you up into 10%. Um, you know, inward bowing of the tendons Achilles pain and manipulation and use of the feet, uh, that's going to get you up into that 10%. And then you start uh, going up into that 20% when you're talking about uh, deformity of the feet. You may have some uh, pronation of your feet, uh, abduction of the feet, and, and um, indications of swelling and, and calluses of your feet. If you're experiencing those symptoms in both feet, then you're going to start looking at being rated at the 30% and the 50%. Um, to be at these levels, typically you're going to need inserts. So inserts are prescribed by your doctors to kind of alleviate the pain, to try to get that functionality back again. So if you're needing inserts uh, on both feet and you're experiencing some of these symptoms here, chances are you're going to be rated at the 30 and 50% level. Um, so when it comes to inserts, there's two, usually two types of inserts. They are off the shelf, like Dr. Soul's inserts that uh, doctors normally try to prescribe first. Uh, you know, you, you just get your $30 inserts and put them in your shoes and see if that makes a difference. Uh, for the more severe uh, cases of the plantar fasciitis or flat feet, the doctors actually may prescribe custom inserts in which you actually go in, get your foot molded, and the VA will, or you know, private private provider, if your insurance covers uh, inserts, they will actually um, send you back uh, custom inserts that you can put in your shoes. Custom inserts could actually be pretty pricey, so uh, if you do have uh, feet conditions that warrant um, inserts, especially custom inserts, definitely get that filled at the VA. Uh, again, these could be pretty pricey. Even with good private insurance, they may not necessarily cover the full cost of inserts. Um, and so um, get, it, get it done by the VA, save yourself some money. So, you know, naturally, a lot of folks in the military, we complain about our feet, right? You know, um, you know, we're in boots all the time, we're marching, we're carrying a heavy workload, and people are gonna start to experience foot problems. Um, my job in the army, uh, I was actually a medical platoon leader. And, you know, I, I remember many, many times um, our, 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 our uh, medics having to manage and, and deal with uh, foot problems of our, of our uh, tankers, our, our tank battalion I was in. All right, next slide. So when submitting a claim for plantar fasciitis, you know, what type of evidence do you need to, to strengthen your claim? So obviously the first evidence, which all claims want are medical evidence, right? You need your medical records. Uh, those records could be from the VA, they can be from DOD, they can be from private provider. And you wanna get medical records, uh, if you have them from your active duty time, you know, that'd be great if you, you've got access to your active duty records, uh, submit that. But even real time medical records, you know, if you're currently being seen for your flat feet or plantar fasciitis from the VA, we want those records. If you're going to the 
private side, like myself, I use the majority of my um, care done uh, on private side. You want to go ahead and get those records. And, and that's something that you should probably start the process even before you submit that claim, right? You know, you've got the idea that, hey, I want to submit a claim. Um, you want to go ahead and start collecting those records as soon as you can. All right, next slide. So type of evidence to submit, in addition to medical records, you want to submit uh, you know, lay evidence, such as personal statements and buddy letters. When, doing, uh, when drafting a personal statement, your personal statement can do several things uh, to support your claim. You know, if, if your plantar fasciitis was due to an incident, let's say you, you, you hurt your foot or your feet during a training exercise or some kind of um, a real time event, you know, you want to use your personal statement to describe that incident. You know, let's say you are, you know, in a mechanized unit and you're jumping off of a tank and the tanks, you know, five feet off of the ground, you, you and you end up, uh, you know, spiking your foot on something sharp or spiking both feet on something sharp and causing all kinds of uh, feet problems. You want to describe that event in that personal statement, you know, um, when it happened, how it happened, uh, what, what, what events occurred afterwards. Did you go to the aid station? Did they take you back to the uh, medical treatment facility? All of those things. Um, in addition to, to describing an incident, you, will, you can use a personal this statement to describe the history, you know, when you were diagnosed with a condition, what type of treatment you're getting, you know, were you diagnosed, uh, you know, two years ago, three years ago, were you diagnosed by a podiatrist, you know, have you gotten physical therapy for the condition since then, are you using inserts, you, you want to go ahead and provide some of that information. Uh, life impact of the condition, you know, use your personal statement to kind of describe how the condition hinders your life, right? Is it, does it stop you from being on your feet? Were you a runner in the past and because of your plantar fasciitis, you can't run like you used to? You know, you want to really describe how that condition's impacting your life. Here's an example of uh, one of our vets who provided a uh, personal statement um, as part of his evidence when submitting his claim for plantar fasciitis. You know, kind of kind of addresses some of those same things that I, I listed here is what you want to cover in a personal statement. I've, I've actually done a webinar on what goes in their personal statement. And really there's, there's no right or wrong uh, on what you put in a personal statement. It's technically really your prerogative, um, but you know, use this opportunity to try to address some of these things and you should be fine. And a question we get asked a lot about personal statements, well, how long should it be? Uh, again, there, there's no, uh, you know, uh, concrete answer to that question there. It can, it's really can be literally up to you on how long you want to make your statement. My advice would, I would probably keep a statement to no more than two pages. If you had to go for three, I'd probably make that a very short three, just because, um, you know, the, the, these providers are seeing a lot of documentation and naturally, interest could, could kind of waver um, when meeting a statement that's that's going to be pretty long. So just something to consider. So when when going after plantar fasciitis, uh, conditions, you know, people can go after conditions usually primarily in two ways: direct service connected, meaning your time in the military actually caused that condition. In my case, I was in the army, so did plantar fasciitis directly cause my condition. And when, when the condition is direct service, uh, chances are that to really have a sh good chance of winning that, you've got to have a diagnosis while active duty. And so if you do not have a diagnosis while on active duty, then the chances of winning a direct service connected condition will, will be hard. It's going to be slimmer than the next option that I described which is going after plantar fasciitis as a secondary condition. So um, when going after as a secondary condition, the, the definition here is a condition that you're currently rated for is either caused or made worse 
your plantar fasciitis. So in these cases here, these are conditions that I've listed that are very common to cause plantar fasciitis. Pes planus. So let's say you, you entered the military with flat feet. The military accepted, accepted that condition. They, they gave you the waiver. Um, but later on in life, uh, because of you know what you did in the military, being on your wind boots for you know days in, days out, uh, all that marching, uh, carrying all that heavy load, you develop uh, plantar fasciitis. Um, you could actually tie your plantar fasciitis to your to your flat feet. Uh, you could tie plantar fasciitis to knee strain and other knee conditions. Uh, this right here, a BVA stands for Board of Veteran Appeals, and this is just an an example of a court case in which a veteran uh, was awarded plantar fasciitis as secondary to his or her uh, knee condition. Um, you could tie plantar fasciitis to back conditions uh, such as degenerated disc disease and other uh, back conditions, uh, arthritis, back strain, any of those conditions can cause uh, someone to develop plantar fasciitis. Uh, radiculopathy and other hip conditions. Uh, let's say you've got a bad hip or bad hips. Uh, because of those bad hips, that's caused you to develop plantar fasciitis. Um, ankle strains, again, you've got bad ankles, that can cause you to have plantar fasciitis. So as you can see, it pretty much is covering every joint from your back on. You know, if you've got a, if you've got a bad back, and you've got problems with your lower extremities, anywhere from your, your hips to your knees to your ankles, that can cause you to develop uh, plantar fasciitis. And you could, you could win that claim by going after as a secondary condition. One thing I wanna point out about this direction of, of being able to tie plantar fasciitis to all of these conditions, you can also reverse that same logic and tie these conditions to your plantar fasciitis if you're rated. So let's say, for example, you've got plantar fasciitis at 50%. Because of your bad feet, you start developing these other conditions in the other direction. You know, your, your plantar fasciitis has led you to developing bad knees. Uh, plantar fasciitis has led you to developing degenerative disc disease. So the logic of secondary conditions, it can go either way. And, and one thing that we, we tend to see is when you've got a bad back or you've got you know, one or two lower extremity problems, over time, that can just spread all out from your legs all the way to your feet. And that's not uncommon. I've had vets that have been rated just for you know, one knee and, and the back at 10%, 10%. And then going through the process of you know, going after secondary conditions, we were able to add hips, the other knee, uh, plantar fasciitis, uh, ankle strains as secondary conditions. And, and that's, that's not uncommon. Uh, people who are gonna have these lower extremity problems, it just will start to kind of spread uh, throughout uh, the legs and feet. All right. Uh, so steps of filing a claim for a secondary service connected condition. Now this slide, I use this in every slide in which I'm talking about a condition that you are primarily attacking it as a secondary service connected condition. Uh, this, these steps are applicable for, for all of that. So first thing you do is you wanna get a formal diagnosis, right? I don't know how often we get veterans coming to us and they go through the program and they complain about uh, symptoms. Hey, Alan, my feet hurt. I, I got bad pain in my feet. Uh, my feet swell at the end of the day. Uh, and then I'll ask, uh, well, well, what's the diagnosis for your feet? And they're like, oh, I never saw a doctor for it. So that's, that's uh, not gonna work. You cannot file a claim for just symptoms alone. So if you're gonna put in a claim for your feet, you've gotta go get the diagnosis. Now, maybe it comes back as uh, pes planus, Maybe it comes back as plantar fasciitis. It could be either or, but we need a formal diagnosis. So that means you're going to your doctor, explaining your symptoms, your doctor perhaps sending you to a specialist, getting that diagnosis. That's step number one. And 
Uh, you should try to get that step done even before you get to uh, VA Claims Insider if you can, especially if you are looking to go after a condition. Um, you should try to get that diagnosis as soon as possible. Uh, you're going to want to document your condition in regards to symptoms and life impact. Uh, again, makes sense, right? You, you're going to go to your doctor or complain about these symptoms, maybe even keep a journal or, or something like that that's kind of describing you know, the, the, the negative impact in your life that this plantar fasciitis causes you. All right. Now, going after a secondary condition, you're always going to need a nexus statement, an independent medical opinion. Now, our medical team that we work with, they have written the IMO for, of plantar fasciitis hundreds of times. You know, I've, I myself have probably worked with probably over 50, 50 veterans in my three years here at VA Claims Insider uh, submitting claims for uh, either PES planus or plantar fasciitis requiring a nexus statement. So if you haven't uh, requested or, re or um, uh, ask for a nexus statement from my medical team. Uh, you know, you would actually click on that link. You'd fill out uh, this form here, um, asking for your medical history, your request for a nexus statement, uh, put in your information here. And then basically in this one field is what you're gonna be applying for. So let's say you want that nexus statement. Now you wanna go ahead and say, I'm, I'm diagnosed for plantar fasciitis. Uh, I believe that my service-connected degenerated this disease and my left knee strain are causing me to have my plantar fasciitis. So you basically are describing what you're requesting from, uh, from the medical team and how you believe it could be tied. So you're going to go ahead and fill this form out. All right. So once you submit, once you get your nexus, you're going to want to submit that claim. You know, you're going to be submitting your medical records, uh, your nexus statement, uh, the DBQ or disability benefits questionnaire, uh, personal statements, buddy letters, miscellaneous here. You know, what, a, what are other documentation that uh, vets have used to kind of document plantar fasciitis? Um, I had a uh, incident report. I had a vet who injured his foot uh, during a... Uh, exercise. I think he was in the reserves. So he actually had that, um, that incident report that when you're in the reservist and you're drilling and you hurt yourself. So he had that documentation that he wanted to submit. Um, I had another vet that went uh, on an ambulance and actually had uh, paperwork associated from that ambulance ride that he submitted uh, as part of his evidence. Uh, next is you want to prepare for a CMP exam if needed. Um, you know, the best way to kind of prepare for a CMP exam is visiting two of our, our websites. Our, our first website is called Military Dis Disabilities Made Easy. Uh, this website here, uh, which is owned by VA Claims Insider, we're in the process of actually revamping this website. You could come here and actually list every condition that the VA rates you for, and you can get knowledge on how that condition is going to be rated for the VA. So if you got a CMP exam, this, this website is definitely one of the first places you want to go to get smart and knowledgeable about your condition. And this way you could read, you know, how, how the condition is going to be rated. And so, you know, you don't go into your CMP exam kind of blind and not knowing what to expect. Uh, aside from that website, you want to come to, to our uh, VA Claims Inside the YouTube page. Uh, we've got lots of great videos here to get veterans prepared for a uh, CMP exam. Uh, you can come down to our video list. Uh, there's actually um, uh, videos specifically talking about how to prepare for an orthopedic uh, CMP exam and things like that. So definitely come to, the, to our YouTube page uh, when it comes to getting ready for a CMP exam. All right, next slide. Um, and that's it. So it's short and sweet kind of 
presentation. Um, you know, again, what I want to do now is turn over uh, the, the, the mic to those folks here in the Zoom room. We'll start with questions here in the Zoom room, and then afterwards, uh, we'll head back over to uh, Facebook and see if they got some questions there. So, so a question from AR, do you have a list of physicians in Miami that can provide IMOs? Great question. So with the independent medical opinion, you actually do not need to physically be seen by any of our providers. Um, they can actually write the IMO based off of the medical evidence that you've provided to your veteran coach. So, you know, if you're, you're working with VA Claims Insider, uh, more likely you've received a email with a, with a link to a personal Google folder, HIPAA compliant, uh, Google folder uh, for you, where you should be uploading your medical records. So if you're trying to get an IMO, uh, you're definitely going to want to be uploading, you know, medical records that show the diagnosis and show the treatment. And for any condition that you're going after, uh, my uh, advice is you should have medical records that are within one year of, of, of time. So if you're going after, like, let's say, plantar fasciitis, and your, your last medical records were five years ago, that's probably outdated. You know, you're going to want to go in and, and get new records. So AR, in regards to having physicians in Miami, it's not needed. Uh, you can get an IMO remotely uh, from the medical team. Great question. Uh, next question from AR. It's a real quick one. So what does a CMP exam for plantar fasciitis looks like? So honestly, it, it's very fast. I've gone in for a, a foot CMP exam. Uh, it's kind of what I described, how a provider is diagnosing you. You know, before going into that CMP exam, you've already really had your diagnosis, right? The, the CMP examiner is probably just verifying that. He or she may look at um, how severe your condition to be. Again, uh, feet conditions can go from zero to 50. So they're probably going to be looking at some of those kind of symptoms there on, you know, do you have, um, uh, what do you got, pronation, uh, are your feet uh, showing abduction, uh, is your, are your feet swollen, do you have calluses forming? So they're going to be looking for visual cues like that and, and so forth. Great question. All right. Uh, any other questions here in the Zoom room? Hello. Yes, Here? sir. Hey, this is Harold. I got hey, a quick up, question. Harold? How you doing? Hey, I wear uh, special insoles on both of my for both of my shoes. It's been about. I'm still wearing. I have to wear them. Uh, it's been two years, uh, and so I still have to wear them. If I don't wear them, then they <clears> swell <throat> again. I have that same problem. Yep. Could I make a claim for that? Now I used to be on the flight deck. That was back in seventy six to seventy nine. Uh, fueling aircraft, so yeah. along that deck. So I'm wondering if that could have caused my my problems, and I also have hip problems and lower back pain. Great, great question, Harold. So as I like, I was mentioning uh, in the presentation, when going after any condition, there's really only two ways that you can can win the claim, right? Whether a condition's directly caused by your military time or where you're trying to argue that your plantar fasciitis is a secondary condition caused by uh, a condition that you're already rated for. So let me ask you a question. Are you, are you rated for the back or any joint in your lower extremities, any, any joint in your, your legs, hips, knees, or ankles? Are you rated for any of those conditions? No, my rating is for other things. Okay. So in, in that case, the secondary condition is – that, that tactic is not even applicable to you, right? If you're not rated for a back or a lower extremity, we can't, we can't use a secondary. So we, we've got to go after it as a direct service connected condition, meaning like what you described, your time in the military, your time on the flight decks was um, so uh, uh, basically impactful that it, it caused you to develop the plantar fasciitis. Now, going after a direct service connected condition, again, the best way, the, the most guaranteed chance of winning it is if you had the diagnosis in your military medical records. 
maybe you complained about bad feet or, or had some complaints about uh, you know pain, that would help your case. But with the direct service, time is not on your side, right? You know, the farther you've been out of the service, um, the harder it gets to prove. You're gonna need a medical opinion no matter what. Um, and, and you could you could try to argue it. I, I've, I've actually have had some veterans who have been out of the service 10, 15 plus years, been able to kind of argue because of their MOS. You know, they were in the Navy for 20 plus years, you know, walking on the decks that it did cause them to have uh, these orthopedic problems. Um, you can put something like that together. That's when that lay evidence that I mentioned is super important, right? Being able to kind of write a personal dis statement describing, you know, what you did in the military. Uh, you know, I, I, was, I served five years. I was jumping up and down and, and spending hours on, on, on hours on the flight decks on uh, heavy metal uh, um, platforms and wing boots. So you're gonna you're gonna need to be able to try to spell that out, and then you're gonna get you're gonna get that that medical opinion. Okay, thank you. Yep. Great, great, All right, great I have a now. question. Yes, sir. Uh, James from Moreno Valley, California. Hey, James. I was I was in my medical records. It shows I had knee, back, shoulder, and foot pain. And when I filed my claim to the VA. I was denied everything, so what could I do? And, and you know for a fact that you had, uh, you saw your military medical records, James, and you saw those uh, complaints in your military medical records? Yes. Okay, do, do you still have copies of your military medical records, James? Uh, no, I turned them into the VA when I, when I filed my claim. All right, so one thing that, um, you know, it's, just because you have complaints in your military medical records, unfortunately, the VA may still deny a claim, right? Especially if you're out of the service for a long time. You know, they're going to argue that maybe your condition um, occurred after you left the military. Uh, so what you're going to want to do, James, is you, you could reopen that claim by submitting what the VA states as new new evidence, you know, what's new evidence? Um, is it new medical records? Is it new personal statements or buddy letters? In your case, James, you're probably gonna need what I described earlier in, in IMO, an in independent medical opinion. So you're gonna need that one of the providers from our medical team basically argue the case for you. Um, I, but I can tell you right now, James, you gotta get a copy of those military medical records, man. If, if, if uh, you haven't requested your C file from the VA, request your C file, get a copy of those military medical records, go through them and verify where exactly that you saw those instances of the complaints. And then, um, you know, if you're not working with a veteran coach, uh, feel free to send me an email to tell you more about how to sign up for our, our process. But you got to get those military records first, James. Okay, well, I'm working with the, uh, your office. I just needed to know how do I go about doing these things. So, Asher, coach, uh, if, to give you instructions on how to request your C file, there, there's basically a, a form you could uh, either fill out the request to e benefits, um, and you just state that you, you're requesting your entire VA C file. Within your C file, if you've applied for a claim in the past, it will have a copy of your military medical records. Uh, as part of your C file. Okay. Thank you. Good luck, James. All right. Yeah. I've got a question as well. Yes, sir. Um, this is Anthony from McKinney, Texas. Yes, Anthony. I originally filed a claim for plantar fasciitis as secondary because I was uh, have calluses on both of my feet, to which I do have a rating for. For, for feet conditions and oh, toes yeah. almost then. Feet condition, yes. Yep. For for both feet. So I submitted, and then I was diagnosed with plantar fasciitis about five years ago, and VA insiders gave me the input for plantar fasciitis because I didn't think I could file for it. I I did have a diagnosis. I submitted that, but the VA still denied it. So I think probably what I'm missing is 
a nexus statement. Yeah, I, that, that was my next question, Anthony. Did you, I yeah. was about to say it too, man. I said, did you have did you have that IMO? So here he, here's the thing with the VA, man. I mean, you could you could go in and 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 find all the medical evidence online that a provider would be referencing as part of their opinion. But the VA is a sticklers for you know credentials, uh, expertise. You know the the regular Joe Joe Schmo off the street. You know going online pulling up evidence, the VA is going to argue. Well, he, yeah. he or she is not credentialed or an expert enough to write that opinion, and that's when they're going to want that IMO. So literally, your the provider could take all the same evidence that you found online connecting. You know, plantar fasciitis to these problems, the, the, the VA denies you, but then you get a, you know, a private uh, health professional to, to write that opinion and, and you win that claim. So okay. I, I would say, I hate to say it, Anthony. Yeah, man, it, it sounds like you got a strong case. You already rated for your foot. Uh, <clears throat> that whatever foot condition you have probably could cause a plantar fasciitis, which could be a higher rated condition, but you're probably going to need the IMO. Uh, to improve your chance of winning it. So I, I always tell vets, man, like if you're submitting a secondary claim without an IMO, let, let's say your chances of winning it are, you know, five, maybe 10%, you know, very yeah. low. The IMO doesn't guarantee you're going to win the claim, but it does help improve your odds. So if you could take okay. this five to 10% chance of winning it, get an IMO and, and get your odds to be 50, 60, 70%, you know, I, I would say that's money well spent if you can if you can get the odds to jump, you know, in the, in that kind of uh, range. So, now, how do I do that? Do I contact uh, the website that you indicated? So you you got to work in order to access the medical team. You got to be working with one of your veteran coaches as an elite uh, member of BA Claims Insider, or you could be a mastery member in which you are basically. Uh, managing your own claim, but have access uh, to, uh, you know, our team and partners, i.e. the medical team or i.e. the mental health team. So if you're not a mastery member, you've got to be an elite member. If you're not working with the coach right now, Anthony, send me yeah. an email and I, I can uh, hook you up with the coach or if you don't have one already. Yeah, I, I, I do have a coach and I need to contact him uh, right now. He wanted me to do a psych evaluation. Yep. And I, I really didn't want to do that, but I need to contact him and get additional information. Yeah. You know, work, work with your coach, you know, this, you, it's your claim. So obviously you are right. the deciding person in regards to the, the strategy and the, and the conditions you want to go after. Um, okay. You know, I don't know who your coach is, uh, but I, I know that, there's a there's a good bang for your buck. There's a good return of value. Mental health conditions, because of the fact that they have such, they have the opportunity to be high rated conditions. We tend to right. value those a lot. And believe it or not, mental health conditions can be a lot easier to prove sometimes than medical conditions. And I, and I don't want to diverge from <laughs> today's topic, but that I, I assume that's kind of the reasoning why your coach yeah. might have been kind of uh, pointing to a, a mental health uh, kind of claim. But I think so. I, I need to get off my duff and contact him directly so he's well aware of what I'm trying to do And uh, because <laughs> I, I don't want to take up all your time here, but uh, th thank you very much. I, oh, of course, Anthony. I'm, I'm glad uh, I could help, man. I'm glad I could help. Uh, yeah. so I got another one well, quick question. I got a question here in the chat. Um, how long does it take to get your C file? Uh, and, and if you've been diagnosed by the VA, is an IMO even required? These are two great questions. So C file, how long does it take to be determined? Or it's, it, it could it could uh, it could have a, a big range. I, I hear people get their their C file and as little as as low as one month. I've heard some vets say it's taken six months to get their C file. Unfortunately. There's really no standard response time uh, with coronavirus. It could even take longer. I've heard some vets say they've been able to visit a regional office and, and get them to generate it right then and there. 
you know, most of the regional offices are closed. So you probably don't have that as an option. I've even been told that some vets have been successful in even getting their, getting a, a VSO to uh, actually print a C file. With the coronavirus, a lot of the, the VSO offices are closed. If you're going to do it through the, the normal request, I'd say on average, when non-corona, it was probably taken two to four months. Um, the next part of the question, if you've been diagnosed as an IMO required, uh, my answer is, is, is still going to be yes, right? A diagnosis by the VA is, is just a diagnosis. You know, most time providers, whether VA or DOD or private providers, they don't necessarily write a medical opinion or provide an explanation. Is it tied to your time in service? And so, um, and if they do put that in your medical notes, it may not be in the language that the VA needs it to be for an IMO. So the answer is a diagnosis by the VA still would not um, fulfill, the fulfill what an IMO can. So I would say still get the IMO. Great Good. questions though. All right. Uh, <clears throat> So any questions on Facebook, guys? I, I am on through the Facebook. So if you guys, here, here's a question. Uh, yeah, gonna... Let's see, one is the most common cause. Uh, okay, yeah, it's just a comment. <laughs> so no question there. Uh, if you guys got any questions on Facebook, uh, feel free to post it. I am reading it, uh, and, I, and I can um, you know, address that here. Um, any other questions here in the Zoom room? Yeah, gonna... Yes, sir. This is really from uh, Virginia. Yeah. Uh, in my medical record, there was an entry that I have. Uh, what's that? I said. Uh, fish flannels. Okay, flat feet. And plantar. There was an, one entry for plantar fasciitis. Uh, yeah, plantar fasciitis. Yes. And I have a lot of calluses on my, my feet. And after four, 19 years after I retire, I have two knee uh, replacement. Yep. How can I put in a claim on this? Do I have need to talk to my coach or fill up a form? All right. So, so great question. So what you described it's almost like it's going to be a multiple kind of claim uh, tactic. So if you're not yet rated for anything in your lower extremity, your back, your, your, your knees, your, your hips, your ankles, no. uh, you, can't, you can't submit your, your knees to those. So if you said you had documentation in your records for flat feet and plantar fasciitis, I would go after those as direct service connected. You know, if, if, you, if, they were, if there were instances of complaints about feet in, in, in your military medical records, go after that, get rated for the feet first. Uh, now, as, as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna, you gotta get up-to-date medical records on your feet. You're probably gonna need an independent medical opinion even with those complaints in your medical records. I, I would assume you've been out of the service for uh, you know a while, so you yes. need that IMO. So what you want to do is get rated for the feet first. You know, doesn't matter if it's flat feet, plantar fasciitis. Like I, I said earlier, they use the same rating criteria. Once you get rated for your feet, then you have a, a, a method to go after the reconstructed knees. So it, it's like a connected dot. Get rated for your feet. Um, once you're rated for your feet, then we would secondary your knees to your feet. So okay. it, it, it's, it's a two-step process. Um, if you're, are you working with the coach, Rudy, or, or what? Yeah. I think okay. you're my coach. Oh, so, all right. <laughs> Sorry. <Rudy. laughs> yeah. So I, right. yeah. So let's talk about that. And, um, and let's see uh, how uh, we want to pursue that one. And Kathy is no, uh, no one sending a, a, an email also. Oh, 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 but you just got your rating back though, right? Say again? You, you said Kathy just sent you an email? 
No, she's sending me an email when I, on my uh, somatic, my oh, psychiatric your, simulation. Your Say again? You said your somatic symptom disorder? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. So let's, so yeah, we'll, we'll, let's schedule a time to chat and we can take a look at this foot condition. Okay. Uh, do I need to fill up a form or something to claim this? Oh yeah. We're going to need to fill out a, uh, a claim just like any, any claim, you know, we will more than likely be submitting it uh, online uh, using okay. e-benefits or va.gov. Um, but anytime you're filing for a claim, if you're going after it for the first time, you could use either of those applications. If you're reopening a claim, if you've applied for these conditions in the past, then we've got to uh, file it uh, using what's called a uh, supplemental claim. So we, we could talk more when we, we chat one-on-one, -on -one, really. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Great questions. Uh, any other questions? Uh, you've got, we've got 10 minutes still. So again, it, uh, you know, if, if we got all the questions that we wanted in regards to plantar fasciitis, as planus, uh, feel free to, um, ask questions about, uh, anything when, in the claims, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll stay online for the uh, next 10 minutes. So. You know, it's, I know the VA is starting to uh, schedule in-person C&P exams. You know, a lot of these orthopedic muscular skeletal conditions were deferred uh, because of the coronavirus. And, and as states started opening up, they, the VA has been scheduling these uh, C&P exams. But, you know, with the rise in the coronavirus, that, that might be put on a hold. So uh, just FYI. Uh, a lot of these conditions that require in-person exams, which almost every muscular skeletal condition does, they, they are being deferred. So uh, just FYI there. But the VA is still processing claims. Uh, mental health claims are being processed. Uh, conditions that don't require in-person uh, kind of review like migraines, sleep apnea, uh, GERD, IBS, conditions like that, the VA are, are making decisions uh, remotely right now. So that's still a good thing. You know, some people could still get claims in, in the system. Hey, Al, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, I plan on uh, going after that. So okay. uh, what I'll do, I'll schedule uh, on your calendar so we can get started on that. Yeah, are you gonna go after as direct service or or secondary? Uh, we can go secondary because I do have uh, left and right knee condition as uh, well as uh, yep. lower back. Oh uh, yeah, if you've got lower back and you've got knees, uh, secondary, strong strong chance. You know, when when going after a secondary orthopedic with an IMO with an nexus statement, I, I'd probably put uh, success rates to be as high as 75, 80%. I mean, okay. um, it, it, it's, it's pretty high when you get an IMO and you've got, you in a sense got two conditions that, you know, can cause your bad feet, both your knees and your back. You get the IMO, have, we should be good. Plus I do have inserts as well. And that, if you got inserts on both feet, the chances are that will be a minimum of a 30% rating. And depending okay. if, uh, you know, if you've got that pronation, you've got that, that, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the, uh, what do you call it here? The abduction of your feet, uh, mm -hmm. you can get up, get up to 50% there. Okay. I hope that's right. Cause, uh, well, like as soon as I get done with this, I'll, uh, schedule through your calendar and, uh, uh so we can get started on that. Cause uh, yeah. I'm gathering yeah, up the, all the documents right now. Feet, feet conditions have the opportunity to be rated very high. I mean, uh, higher than your knees, right? Higher than your, your hips. Uh, knees get a bilateral factor, but most people's knees go only 10-10, unless you've had re reconstructive knee surgery or something like that. Uh, but feet, I mean, and, and most people have got bad feet. I mean, they're getting inserts. So 
that that immediately puts it to at least a 30% condition if you can get it connected. So it has the it has the opportunity to be high rated. And if you've got any lower extremity, if you've got back or anything lower extremity, you have a way to connect it. But again, you're gonna need an IML. So I'm not sure. Sorry if you guys are hearing that screaming. That's, that's not anyone being tortured. That's my uh, my little two-year-old screaming for something outside. So apologize for that screeching there. Yeah, Rob, uh, Rob, one of our coaches, he's saying, um, the IMO, the golden ticket to winning a properly prepared claim. I, I agree, Rob. You're right, man. Without that IMO, uh, you're, it, it lowers your chance. And that IMO could be that the, the evidence you need uh, to win a claim. So it's all about, you know, playing the odds, right? You know, <laughs> you go into Las Vegas, <coughs> you want to try to get the odds as best you can in your favor. Uh, the same thing when submitting a claim to the VA and, and, and that IMO uh, can be that tool that, that gets that for you. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah, so uh, again, I, I'm out here every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I, and we put out the schedule for the rest of July. So take a look at that. I think on the 22nd, uh, I, that will be the one day I'm not going to be presenting at 6 p.m. I'll be actually presenting at uh, 12 p.m. Eastern with uh, Brian on, on his, um, on his uh, Facebook page. I forgot the topic that we're going to be covering, but uh, it'll be recorded. So if you can't make 12 o'clock, don't worry about it. We'll record it. Uh, it'll be posted, and you'll have the opportunity to watch it again. Um, if you got a, I, if you got a, an idea for a topic that you want more information on, again, send us an email. Send me an email. Send an email to your coach, letting him know, uh, you know, hey, I, I'd love to get more info on this. If you think Alan or you guys can present? Uh, feel free to send us an email on that. You know, we would love to um, uh, get that going for you. And um, yeah. you know, uh, if I know we send out some emails about this, uh, and you may have already seen it, but I, I got to give a a little. Uh, um, mentioned for my, my, my marketing team here. So if you didn't know, we, we're running a referral program. Uh, you know, if you're not a member of our referral program, please sign up. If you just come to this website, ask for your coach. It's on the bottom of my uh, signature block. Uh, you can sign up. And what happens is you get a specific uh, URL or registration code for any veteran that you send over. Uh, you, you know, you can earn cash rewards for that uh, up to uh, $150 uh, for each person you refer. Uh, we've got a veteran right now, one of our members, I think he's, he's already got paid on three of his referrals at $50 and uh, he's got like seven more in the pipeline. So he, he's, he's actually a great uh, champion of ours, uh, sending us uh, fellow veterans that can benefit from our services. So it's a great way to be engaged uh, with the VA Claims Inside a Family, the Team Strong Family, uh, um, my marketing team that manages this program uh, is even providing lots of tools for you as a referral member to actually uh, spread the word, business cards, uh, training, the whole nine yards. So um, if you're interested in and wanting to kind of, you know, be engaged with, with the VCI movement, uh, this is a great opportunity to do so. So a little, a little uh, blurb there for it. And so that's really about it, guys. Um, again, if you got any questions for me, feel free to send me an email. Uh, my calendar, if you send me an email, uh, if you want to jump on my uh, an appointment one on one, my my count my signature block has my calendar link, and also I do. If you didn't know, I do uh, uh, two days of um, open hours that you can come into and and uh, book an appointment on my calendar. That's Fridays at 5 p.m. 
and Mondays at 8 p.m. It's an open Zoom call, just like this. Uh, you could just come in and out, ask your question, and so forth. Um, you could also stick around and talk to other veterans, uh, hear from other veterans, asking questions. Great opportunity to learn from each other uh, and so forth. So again, I do that Fridays at 5 p.m., Mondays at 8 p.m. Ask your coach. If I'm not your coach, how do I sign up for that? Or uh, send me an email and I'll send you the link to sign up for that as well. So great, great opportunity uh, for you guys to get uh, more more time with me uh, to ask some of those you know, hard questions that you may have. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thanks a lot for, you know, spending another Wednesday evening with me. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, good luck with your claim. Keep fighting. We had a lot of big winners this past week with uh, Team Strong. I, I just had one of my uh, my my uh, parents' close friends win his claim yesterday from 10 to 100 percent. He's a Vietnam veteran. He finally got the rating that you know he deserves after fighting with the VA for years and years and years. Uh, super happy. We had a lot of veterans this past week that got, uh, you know, finally the ratings deserves, you know, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 uh, uh, ratings. So, you know, not every veteran may be 100%. Our goal is to get you rated uh, accurately for the conditions that you're dealing with. Uh, you know, that's what, that's what we want to do. So whether or not your max should be 50 or 100, we want to make sure that you're getting rated accurately for all those health problems. So keep the fight, guys. Thanks, Terry. Appreciate it, man. All right, guys. Have a great, have a great uh, evening, and uh, I'll see you next Wednesday. All right. Thanks, Alan. All right. Take care, guys. Alan, thank you.